Here's something else that happened in California that uh, it looks like this is a, um, I just saw the headline on this and it looked very uh, intriguing. So I don't understand exactly everything that's going on yet, but let's take a look because this caught my attention. California passes a landmark bill to remake gig economy. So this happened in Sacramento. California legislators approved a landmark bill on Tuesday, that was yesterday, that requires companies like Uber and Lyft to treat contract workers as employees, a move that could reshape the gig economy and that adds fuel to a year's long, ah, pun there, adds fuel, do you dig it, do you get it, adds fuel to a year's long debate over whether the nature of the work has become too insecure. The bill passed 29 to 11 and a vote in the state Senate and will apply to app-based companies despite their efforts to negotiate an exemption. California's governor, Gavin Newsom, endorsed the bill this month and is expected to sign it after it goes to the state assembly in what is expected to be a formality. Under the measure, which would go into effect January 1st, workers must be designated as employees instead of contractors if a company exerts control over how they perform their task or if the work is part of a company's regular business. So here's the thing. All right, let, let's, let's, uh, let's keep reading here. The bill's passage, which codifies and extends a 2018 California Supreme Court ruling, threatens gig econ economy companies like Uber and Lyft. The ride-hailing firms, along with app-based services that offer food delivery, home repairs, and dog walking services, have built in their have built their businesses on inexpensive independent labor. Uber and Lyft, which have hundreds of thousands of drivers in California, have said contract work provides people with flexibility. They have warned that recognizing drivers as employees could destroy their business businesses. It will have major reverberations. Okay. So here's the thing. There's no reason. First of all, a, a couple initial reactions to this. Just because someone's designated as an employee they could still get screwed over. It's not like that is some blanket protection there that, oh, you're an employee now, you're fine. Employees are getting screwed over all the time. Uh, second of all, I, I don't see how this could actually disrupt Uber or Lyft's model. Now, what they're going to try to do, what Uber and Lyft will try to do is they'll try to put this price on the consumer. They'll try to say, well, because we have to pay employee taxes now and everyone's treated as an employee, your rides are going to cost more. Um. It should not be that way. You know why? Because the owner of Uber, uh, the CEO of Uber, recently bought a $72 million house. That's why. Well, the people who build that wealth for him are sleeping in their cars. So that's what's going on here. There's no reason why the people who build and generate the wealth for Uber and Lyft, if there were no drivers, Uber and Lyft wouldn't work. We know this, right? If nobody drove for it, it wouldn't work. If you log on to that lift and there's no cars available to get you from point A to point B or the nearest car is way far away, guess what? Uber and Lyft ain't going to be around very long. So the people generate this wealth for the CEO. The CEO should not be buying $72 million homes while the people who generate that wealth are sleeping in their cars. That's absolutely ridiculous because they need the drivers. We have this weird mentality in the United States that somehow our jobs are an act of charity by our employer, that somehow we shouldn't ask for more. We should be thankful we have that. Don't, don't expect the Walton family to treat you fairly. Don't expect a corporation to treat you fairly. You're lucky you have a job. Just be thankful they're giving you a job. And if you don't like your job, quit. Guess what? That is backwards because you know those people at the top. Oh, and why do we why do we subscribe to these messages? Because that's what the corporate media pumps into our brains. And who is owned? Who owns the corporate media? Elite corporations who are screwing over their employees. You see how it's a big club. You see how it's a big cycle of garbage. Hey, we're the corporations screwing over people. Tell them they should just be thankful for their jobs. Ha 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 ha. We own the media. Guess what? They need you. Your employer needs you. Do you need your job? Of course, we, we all need a job. Sure, everybody needs a job. All right. Well, not everybody, but you get the idea. But your employer needs you. They need your labor. They need your output. If you quit, they would have to replace you. So your job, 
Your job, your livelihood is not a charitable act from your employer. It is an agreement that you give them your output. You give them hours of your life. You work hard. And in exchange, you should get a living wage. You should get compensated fairly. And you should be able to have your basic needs met. And you should get health care. Unfortunately, the, we have an employer-based health care system. It shouldn't be that way, and hopefully it changes. But until it does, you should be given benefits. So, you know, and as far as the ins and outs of this bill, look, Uber and Lyft, they're not going to do something stupid to price themselves out of this. So if this forces them to treat the people who drive for them better and to share the wealth a little bit, which they can do many times over, good good. And if this wrecks their business model, something new will pop up. And hopefully, may, you know what might pop up instead? A cooperative. Imagine if there was an alternative to Lyft and Uber that was a worker-owned cooperative. I'd sign up for that tomorrow. In fact, something might exist already that's like that. I mean, I, if it is, email me because I don't know about it. If it does. Uh, and maybe it does. So maybe, just maybe, a cooperative will pop up where everyone's treated as an employee and is and is uh, in tune with this law. So I'm glad there's laws out there to put pressure on Uber and Lyft to start treating their uh, start treating their drivers better. And their drivers deserve to make a living wage. Their drivers deserve to um, to be compensated fairly for what they do because if there weren't any drivers, it would all go bye-bye. It would all go bye-bye. And there's no reason. I mean, there, there's plenty of uh, employees out there that have flexible uh, work abilities that make their own hours. That happens all the time. So, so this Uber and Lyft going, well, this would wreck our model. We give them flexibility. There's plenty of employee designated jobs that have flexibility that are, you know, part time. There's no reason why, why you can't just have a W-2 for that and, and keep track of it and give them a W-2 uh, and give them a wage that is a living wage. And if they only drive for a couple hours a week, well, that's the amount that they get. They get compensated for those hours. And if they drive more, well, well, then, you know, maybe it's a full-time job or maybe it's a part-time job. There's nothing wrong with it being a part-time thing. There's nothing wrong with it being a supplemental thing. It's just that supplemental thing should be compensated fairly. How does that hurt your business, Uber and Lyft? I'll tell you, it doesn't. It just forces you to actually compensate your drivers fairly, which is a good thing. Good on you, California. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placo. Go through it together and make it our own. Get your new-